So our first question for you, are any of the current cloud providers anywhere close to achieving lock-in? Well, at some level, they do lock you in, in that uh, if you're with cloud provider A uh, and they go out of business, they have some sort of disaster, uh, you don't have built in any mechanism to, to, to be somewhere else. It's not like, it's not like even the situation with proprietary software where if Microsoft goes out of business, your, your Windows systems are still going to operate tomorrow, but if the cloud provider goes out of business, you're down at that point. Uh, so that is their point of lock-in. Uh, you know, the good news is that you know there there are ways to the precautions you can take to avoid that lock-in and enable yourself to move across the clouds. So, what are the main issues with lock-in? Is it data portability? Is it security? Is it the the going out of business threat? Well, y yeah, the d the going out of business threat is something you have to worry about. But uh, but you know when you're talking about dealing with Amazon Web Services or Rackspace, that's not a realistic worry. Although you know people would have said that about GM or Enron, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But you know the 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 bigger thing is is you have to worry about with all companies is if business. It needs change. So does the way they operate their business, and it may not align with, uh, w you know, the way you want to run your business. And disasters happen too. And especially if you've got a single point of presence in the cloud, uh, you know, y you're you're susceptible to to disasters that impact the cloud provider. And in the cloud, the cloud provider isn't responsible for your backups or your disaster recovery procedures. Mm -hmm. You are. And and so. The, the key challenge in terms of not being locked into the cloud is being proactive about dealing with the things people tend to avoid dealing with, DR backups and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Now, do open APIs provide a way around lock-in? Uh, yes, uh, I, I think they're the key to vendor lock-in. And, you know, I, I'm a strong proponent of open source, been doing it for 20 years since before there was the term open source. But open source, you know, open source functions in providing uh, or avoiding lock-in when we're talking about the package software world in terms of providing an alternative to proprietary software elements. But open source doesn't really get us that same level of freedom when we talk about the cloud because if I'm in an entirely open source stack in Cloud Provider X, I'm still locked in at some level to Cloud Provider X uh, unless I uh, have an open API that I can leverage so that I can pull my data out, I can control and provision resources in that cloud and have an alternative cloud that has equivalent resources that I can access. So the, the API is really the key to, to portability in, uh, in the cloud environment in a way that open source you know, enables but isn't sufficient for. So what's the current state of open APIs and cloud providers? Oh, you know, there are a number of APIs out there that have opened themselves up from a from a true open source perspective, you know, the Rackspace API is probably a good one that fits into that. Then there are, there are uh, APIs like vCloud that have, you know, published themselves and said, you know, you're welcome to implement them, but they still retain a lot of control. And then the other extreme is, you know, the Amazon APIs are, um, you know, everybody's implementing on them, but Amazon has made no statement as to um, their positioning on the intellectual property issue related to it. Uh, I would call it an open API with a caveat, I mm -hmm. guess. It's open in the sense that it's published, you can do whatever you want with it, other people can implement it, but it does have a little bit of an intellectual property cloud hanging over it. Hmm. So, last question I have for you. Do you think that we'll get to a point where companies will turn to the cloud for their infrastructure as opposed to building it themselves? Yes, I mean, I'm already seeing that today. Now, mm -hmm. you know, if you're talking about uh, Fortune 500 banks, obviously mm -hmm. they're, not, uh, they're not jumping in the public cloud to put your bank accounts online, but, uh, you know, we're seeing uh, the outer tiers of, of co corporate infrastructure moving in the cloud today even with uh, highly sensitive environments if it's not highly sensitive data that we're talking about. And by outer tier, I mean things like marketing applications, sales applications that don't have house, you know, the company jewels. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, um, and I would say, you know, you know, 
15 years ago, a banker would have told you, no way you'll ever see your, your accounts online. Today, we take it for granted, and I, and I think you're going to see uh, the day where financial data is sitting in the cloud and nobody thinks twice about it. Great. Well, thank you very yeah. much for joining us. Thank Appreciate you. It.